coming up on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills After Show. I mean this because I've had two miscarriages, so I understand. Don't we do phony. Know. By the way, fake doesn't work for me. I couldn't believe what she said to me. I found it disgusting. Sutton makes everyone else's problems about herself. That's annoying as f Really? It's like, wait, turn the attention on me. I don't know. I, I don't like the way I handled that. I've had two miscarriages. I never heard this before. Because I've had two miscarriages, and no, I don't talk about that a lot. I wanted to tell her I'm sorry. Have you sought treatment? I need to. It's time. It is time. It's time. Honey, you have the means. You're educated. Why not seek professional help? Well, of course, that was after I had two tequilas. I think she was trying to find a way to connect, be funny. Well, I always think take laxatives and get rid of it. It's her way to say, like, I can talk about it, but it's not the right way to talk. And I'm to blame for, I'm going to say, 95% of it. Thank you. You know, I always apologize, and I'm going to stop doing that. And you're not good at it. Apologies? Yeah. Why? Because you go on and go on and go on, and then you put your foot in it, and it doesn't turn out to be an apology. You actually hurt the person even more. Oh, gosh. All right. We'll talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills After Show starts now. Diana Jenkins joined you ladies this season, but Sutton, you didn't get off on quite the right foot. I am a very good person. You told us and that already. You have to say it again. But the tension came to a head at Garcelle's party. She actually came at me and said some really horrible things, mm -hmm. I felt like. The fake like, doesn't work for me. Like, that, that's just like, bring it on. on. Come on, bring it on. Bring it on. She's oh, looking at me like I'm the devil. Are you? If you need a new villain, here I am. She said, why are, if you're on bed rest, why are you here? Right. Sutton said that to Diana. Right. I just wanted to talk to you. First, check on you. I'm good. See how you're doing. Because you were on bed rest. I still am, but it's all good. So you're on bed rest, but you're here. Yeah. So that's confusing. Well, I think before Garcelle's birthday party, Diana sent out a text. Doctors are putting me on bed rest to stop bleeding. This trip and flying and drinking and burning my candle both ends after losing baby. Bleeding for eight weeks straight after miscarriage. And four major surgeries that followed in the last few weeks. I didn't like it because I felt like she gave you a jab. Oh, for sure she did. I usually wouldn't share this in a group text because it makes me look like a whining bitch. But Garcelle misspelled might think I'm rude, so there it is. She just wanted to make sure that Garcelle, that she wasn't being rude. Right, because I called her rude several times. And it just felt to me like passive aggressive. Go back to your texting. Is that passive aggressive or aggressive? It was passive aggressive. No, it was aggressive. We can't say anything to that text because now she's at home in bed on bed rest. And what's anybody going to say to that? And then she shows Hope you up. feel to, better. Yeah. And she comes to your birthday party and she's all dolled up. Yeah. And with matching fur coats with her husband. And I said something, maybe, that I shouldn't have said because I was protecting you, I think, maybe. And I said, oh, that was a really short bed rest. I think that that was the opening line. So imagine if that's the opening line of a conversation. That person that hears it. You're shut down immediately and well, turned yeah. off. What are you going to do? Well, Sutton yeah. couldn't see that. So Sutton, She didn't see that she, that was weird? She couldn't see it. Look, sometimes I can be a little jabby myself, but at least I do it to your face, and I don't do it in a text. There you go. You know what Diana's been through? Yeah. Very recently, Very right? recently. So at that point, you, I, I would imagine Diana's guard already went up, and Sutton was Yeah, that's upset. a little below the belt. You don't do that. I didn't know the extent of it. And nobody did. Nobody did. Even the girls that she's closest to. I didn't. I thought that it happened a long, a, a while ago. Not a long time ago. I knew it was I, recent. I thought, I thought it was months ago. I thought months. it was six I months ago. Realize. I realized she got hurt by that. By the bed rest talk? Uh-huh. So what she did was then she, if she gets hurt, she pulls out nuclear weapons. Yes. Yeah. You are the fakest person I've ever met in my life, literally. By the way, also you're boring. I can forgive everything. I can't forgive being boring. I think that Diana 
came into the group wanting to not like me. Mm. Because one of the first times we were all together, she said I was clumsy with my words. She's clumsy with her words and her behavior. Yep. How do you know that I'm clumsy with my words? We haven't had a conversation yet. So actually I'm quite smart and not clumsy with my words. How do you know that I'm clumsy with my words? Who told you that? Who do you think told her? There's two people that she knows. It's either Lisa or Crystal. During your disagreement with Diana, you open up about your own miscarriages. What I got back from her was one of the most hurtful conversations from any person I've ever had in my life. I mean this because I've had two miscarriages, so I understand. It's more than that. I, I know that. And we Don't do all... phony with me. By the way, Listen, fake doesn't work with me. Like that, that's just like, bring it on. on. Come on, bring it on. Bring it on. I bring not... it on. The whole miscarriage conversation got real deep, and I was really being real. Like saying, you know what, I'm sorry. I, should, I shouldn't have said that. So you're in bed rest, but you're here. Yeah. So that's confusing. I didn't know your experience because you never shared it. You never told us. Right. You ended up with the girls in Mexico trying to have fun. And, you know, on the way back in, in a plane, I started bleeding again. I didn't, I thought that this happened a long, a, a while ago. Not a long time ago. I knew it was I, recent. I, I, thought, I thought it was months ago. I thought months. it was six I months ago. So I'm trying to, like, connect, work, the, work it out with her. That's what I was doing, and she just floored me. I'm and telling you, I'm not at me I'm When not I was falling. saying I'm sorry, do you want to I talk see you. to me? I see you. I see you. When you see that in someone, it, I, I, I'm speechless. And for me to be speechless. Mm -hmm. uh, I have so many thoughts on this night. Well, first of all, I don't like the way I handled that situation that night at all. You know, after that many margaritas. I lost two babies. I totally understand this. Not You lost two babies? I never heard this before. I've had two miscarriages. I never heard this before. It just didn't sit well with me, the, the timing and, you know, I don't know. It really was stemming from a place where, and I love Sutton. We are genuinely good friends. We talk all the time. But she does tend to turn conversations to be about her. Happy today, Dorit. It's weird. It's terrifying. Begging for her life. I've been putting out fires so all day today, too. But it might just be that kind of day. So when Diana was sharing that, and then she said, oh, I have that, too, I was like, not again. Here's my thing. I feel like Sutton makes everyone else's problems about herself. Like, when your home invasion happened. I mean, I wasn't held at gunpoint, I'm sorry. But my, you know, disaster happened. I don't want my name in an article that's associated with this. It's always kind of, well, me too. And that's annoying as Because I've had two miscarriages, and no, I don't talk about that a lot. I wanted to under, like, get to know that part of her and tell her, I'm sorry. And why I'm truly sorry is I know what that feels like. I think this is where lies the problem. It's every time. So when something yes. dramatic or bad happens to someone. It's always like, me too. It happened to me too. Yeah. Sometimes when someone's going through something really shitty, you know, it's that moment. They're in that moment. You I don't just want to be there. You delivery. just want to comfort. Yeah. It comes um, in lieu of any kind of sympathy. It's true. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And then she gets upset if that's not received. Oh. That's all I have is sympathy. You have none. I just wanted it to be right. And I, I couldn't believe what she said to me that night and her reaction. I found it disgusting. After their clash, Diana and Sutton did come to a truce in your living room. Take all the time you need, take all the space you need. Thank you. Okay? Okay. Sutton? That was beautiful. Time out know. for both of us. Time out. I'm thinking this is going to last about as long as this luncheon is. <laughs> I don't want to be a negative Nelly, but that's just going by my instinct here.
I didn't think things were going to change overnight. I thought if two people want to, it's possible to move forward. Um, but it just felt like there was a lot of water under the bridge, and it just felt like there was a little bit more than just that passing conversation that was going to make it a whole lot better. Not to mention that five minutes prior to our exchange with Diana, she was digging her heels in and couldn't really see another side. I wouldn't ever make fun of somebody's miscarriage. You did. You questioned that she was on bed rest. She hurt my people. feelings terribly. So I am skeptical when I see someone speak, you know, one way without someone there. And, and then, then another five way. minutes later. Yeah. You know, How Di genuine is that? You know, I always apologize and I'm going to stop doing that. Um, and you're not good at it. I, apologies? Yeah. Why? Because you go on and go on and go on and then you put your foot in it and it doesn't turn out to be an apology. You actually hurt the person even more. I thought that, Teddy, maybe you were going to be a little boring. I'm sorry. Are we supposed to be honest or not? She's about to cry. Let's, no, I'm, I'm not. sorry. Don't oh, I'm fine, you guys. Really? I do yeah. Because yeah. I feel like when I apologize, I'm really apologizing. Well, I do apologize that you got thrown in the mix of my craziness, we'll call it. Yeah, but you go a little too long. But like, I need to turn. stop. Yeah. <laughs> like, I need to stop. Yeah. I'm leaving my forever house, which I completely see. I think leaving the house <laughs> was harder than I was pretending it to be. Mm. I do apologize if I if I projected that. Oh gosh! All right, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Oh, interesting. All right. Well, but in this case, I, I did apologize. I think that Diana isn't ready to kind of accept anything. Did you apologize, or did, or did you expect an apology? No, I don't, no, no, I don't know no, 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 no. I, you know, I'm done apologizing um, because I've apologized. I am a very authentic person, and I think it's why we get along so well mm -hmm. because we mean what we say. I mean, I might mess up, but I always take responsibility when I mess up. We've had a rough and rocky start, and I'm to blame for, I'm gonna say, 95% of it. Thank you. She should have been apologizing to me, by the way. You are the fakest person I've ever met in my life, literally. By the way, also, you're boring. Good point. I should have taken 55% of the blame. <laughs> I will take one for the team. While you're sick with COVID, you FaceTime Lisa Rinna and the conversation turns to Tom. Yes. Have you talked to Tom at all? Yeah, he heard I had COVID, so he wanted to make sure I was okay. Nothing about these conversations are good other than I know that he's in a safe place. But I also know what that place means. You know, memory care facility. What was it like hearing from him? <sighs> Look, it's it's a tough, it's a tough place. I could have never foreseen myself being in a situation like this. Like, I've been divorced before, but this is on a whole new level of crazy. And it was just tough. You know, it's hard to hear someone that you knew to be so powerful and smart and quick and then, you know, in decline. It's hard. I, but he hasn't had COVID. <laughs> I mean, but... He's had know. a lot of other things. Right, so. <laughs> but he doesn't have, you know, he didn't catch COVID. I was like, do you have COVID? He's like, no, I heard you had COVID. And I was like, oh, yeah. You know, Erica spent half her life with this person. I mean, imagine that, you know. Um, so I would imagine there are so many different feelings, you know. So many. From the outside so world, many. it's very easy, you know, to cast judgment. But I, you know, it's a whole different perspective, and there's got to be. And when you're dealing with so many different feelings, it's I can't It's a lot of imagine. conflicting emotions. Yes. I you know, you're angry, you're sad, you're... <sighs> You, you, you long for the past, but this is the present. You know that that life is over and gone, and then you have to deal with this, the aftermath, the fallout of everything legally, personally, emotionally, financially, and still show up and do Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and still get out there. And, um, and, and it's, it's, it's very hard, has been very hard. Garcelle, you introduced us to your fabulous friend Cherie, yes. and Sutton, you got to know her a little bit better at Kyle's luncheon. 
Is that the time you glued her eyes shut? Yes. Oh, oh we're gonna get into that. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the lash. Okay. Okay. It's gross. No, uh, wait. I don't have to my eyes shut. Came out in a big glob. Oh. Oh my God. Sutton's clumsy with her words and her hands and everything else. She literally glued shut Cherie's eye. No way. Swear to God. The gray glue. It looked like a horror movie. Jamie actually thought that that couldn't be real, that that would actually happen. No, she did. Oh my God, this happened in front of Jamie. I am so into this. You have Oh gosh, no wait, idea. wait, wait. How embarrassing. There is no way that Sutton's drag is ever coming near my eyeballs. Ever. Okay, first of all, Cherie was sitting next to me and she said that the corner was coming off. I said, you cannot tell. That should have been case closed. <laughs> but she kept festering. It wouldn't go away. So Kyle said, Bring in the eyelash glue. <laughs> and for some reason, I'm doing it. Why Sutton? Because, you know, there are other, she could have come to you. I mean, putting on an eyelash. That's as, really intimate, like. And it's not the easiest thing to do. No, you it's either not. know how to do it or, or you, you don't. don't. But you certainly don't offer to do it for someone else if you don't know how to do it. I put on my own eyelashes. I can do that. And this wasn't a brush. My eyelash glue has a brush. This eyelash glue, you just squeeze it. Oh. So I squeezed it and it went everywhere, like all over her face. Oh. <gasps> I've never seen eyelash glue like this. I'm used to the brush. So it did go, it, <laughs> it did go all over her eye. And then, but it also kind of went up here and down her face. Wow. Like Was oh, Cherie pissed? Um, or did know, she Cherie. handle it? No, Cherie ha handles things. You know, yeah. like she's such a positive person. Right. I can't. And it's not seven times. Cherie was very upset because her eyelash, her she was glued together. She couldn't see. And then Jamie had to go run. She came over to help. Sounds like a disaster to me. But then the the napkin got stuck to her face. No. Oh. It kind of became one of those blot tests because the eyelash glue was like a dark. Blue color. What? I don't know. I don't buy this. And so it was all over the napkin. And Kyle was not happy about that. Wow. So I did that. <laughs> yeah, you did. I didn't mean yeah, to. Yeah, you did that. We were all teasing because it was like, Sutton, did you do that on purpose? It felt like a little bit of sabotage because. I think so. I don't really think so. But I mean, like, the amount of glue that she put on when we saw it, it was, it was, uh, yeah. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. <laughs> you know, I think Jamie, she afterward had us all sign the napkin and like wanted to keep it to be able to auction off. It was a real moment. That's cute. Yeah. One of the conversations you did have at the holiday party, Erica, was with Crystal, and it was regarding her. <laughs> you want to remind me? <laughs> hey, Erica, are you gonna drink? But yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm drinking. I started drinking uh, champagne at home, so I should probably do neurogasm. <laughs> yes, I need a gasm. <laughs> I need another drink. I know what it is. It was about her eating disorder. You know, the holidays are weird. It's a lot of food. It's a lot of, it's a lot of food. Oh. But does In that summer? trigger you, or how do you feel? Yeah. Do you know? Oh, you look okay. beautiful. Maybe really ignorant for a second. Really beautiful. Is it like you eat it and feel guilty, or you deny yourself eating it? I'm just curious. Eat it and feel bad. Ah. And I think that I asked Crystal, why haven't you sought professional help for your eating disorder? Am I right? Look at that. Have you sought treatment? I need to. It's time. It is time. It's time. I don't know what's going to come out on Doesn't the other end. Doesn't matter what comes out. <laughs> you know what's going to come out? A better crystal. Here's why I asked. Crystal has told us about it, and she's been very open on Instagram, social media about her eating disorder. And when I was going through my mental health stuff, I reached out to a psychiatrist to help me. You know, look, I know that I can't take care of this myself. I need professional help. I reached out got and got, you know, um, treated. I couldn't understand why Crystal, when I asked her this, I said, hey, have you sought professional help? She said, no. And I, it, I thought it was interesting because if something was occupying that much of my life, like when I was waking up feeling hopeless and I knew that I couldn't handle this, I reached out to psychiatry. If she's struggling this hard with an eating disorder, telling us about it, going on and talking, honey, you have the means, you're educated, you have the access, why not seek professional help? But of course that was after I had two tequilas. 
I have had treatment in the past. I've talked to people in the past. I mean, like I currently talk to someone. People have therapists their entire lives because you don't resolve those problems, you work through them. It's an ongoing thing. And this is just one of those things. Even someone like Erica, who's very choice in her manners, her words and stuff like that, there are some topics that can feel awkward for people. And I think that this was one of them. So what happens when you purge? I just feel better. It's like a relief. Right. Because before- Is it because it's out? Yeah. I think she was trying to find a way to connect, be funny. Okay. Um, well, I always think take laxatives and get rid of it. That's an aspect of an eating disorder that someone I knew had. And I would have never known that, I think, had I not had an eating disorder. Like, I discovered that when I was talking with someone I know. And so I think it was more triggering that, like, that you know, as she's saying these things, she doesn't know that it could be hurtful. Like, had that been something that I had an issue with, it could have been, um, like, really bad for me, you know, or just made me feel bad. But I have my entire life dealt with people saying things to me that are awkward and, but not intentionally. What is it, babes? You chicken tender and barbecue ranch. Get them to do it. Can't have this. It's a chicken tender. I'm not going to eat. All right. So I just sort of like, okay, like, let's move on from this. Because I think she's trying to find a way to talk to me and connect. It's like small talk, but it goes sort of awry. And I just think people, it's not to say that people need to be more sensitive. They don't know. But it's just a reminder. I think for me, to be sensitive to other people that like, you just don't know, but also giving grace to people. Like, why would she ever know that that's something that's a thing, right? So, yeah, but I don't think people want to talk about this topic. They don't know how to, and it's her way to say like, I can talk about it, but it's that's not the right, you know, it's not the right way to talk. So Kyle, you swing by Kathy's house for lunch and you have what some might describe as the world's fanciest baked potato. Do you have enough caviar there? I'm doing it like they do at Caviar Caspa in Paris. I've never seen one person that had that much caviar in my whole life. You're gonna be full. I am? Yes. <laughs> well, not only that, it's the amount of caviar that she's putting into the potato. I mean, this is like a party for like 25 people. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but She's just piling that caviar in there. I'm like, boy, you're really raking up the, the cost of that potato with the amount of caviar you're scooping into it. I am not a foodie. My sister is a foodie. But, you know, when we go over there, it's usually like soup, salad, chicken, you know, simple, normal things, unless we have a nice fancy dinner, fine. But a baked potato with caviar? I've never seen that as an entree. I mean, call me simple spice. I don't know. I've never, I really thought that was a side dish. I don't care how expensive it is, it's still a potato. But hey, if she's gonna do it, I might as well. And of course you have to wash it down with a Coke. I mean, if I were throwing a baked potato party, it would be like chives and sour cream. Like, I don't know, maybe I'll get fancy and do, I don't know, I don't eat bacon, but bacon bits, <laughs> I don't know. Bacon I, bits are vegan, I will say. So then bacon bits and then Sutton, who's the vegetarian who eats bacon, could have the bacon bits. I haven't eaten meat in so long, but there's something about bacon that I cannot resist. Right? 